How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video and today we were supposed to be doing the reveal of the McLaren, what's next for the McLaren, the big things that are coming for it in 2024 and I'm, and I'm not talking like no Honda Civic Racer. we're not talking about no fake hood scoop and fake toe straps, no we're talking about real big things. Anyways, I'm still editing that video and I wanted you guys to have a video on this beautiful Tuesday afternoon. So hopefully you guys will be happy with this one. We're taking a look at some tuner cars on Facebook Marketplace. These are cars you guys sent me. I, I haven't seen these listings yet. So we're going into this like Helen Keller. We're going in blind. We have no idea what to expect. Anyways, if you see any cool or bad listings, send to my Gmail, drewpeacock.clips at gmail.com. And let's go ahead and dive right in. 2001 Dodge Viper GTS Coupe, $135,000. This one seems like a pretty good one right here. I mean, it seems it seems pretty promising. We got a parachute mounted on the back. Right then and there, that lets you know this is probably a pretty fast car. We got some fender, front fender exits or side skirt exits, which lets me know this is probably a twin turbo Viper. Tiny tire, tiny wheel up front. It says 1,500 wheel horsepower on its license plate. If you're flexing numbers like that, you better have it. Looks like we have a uh, automatic transmission, probably a TH400. I guess we'll have to see in a second. No more streetcar. I, I wouldn't call this a streetcar anymore. Once you start getting the aluminum seats, the harnesses, the the racing steering wheel, the TH400, the cage, uh, the parachute. Once you start getting all that, yeah, I, it's hard to call this thing a streetcar anymore. You, this guy might say, "Oh, I have AC," but yeah, if you can't sit in a McDonald's line, I wouldn't consider it a streetcar. I mean, look at this thing. Jesus Christ. I don't know if this is a fire suppression system or some sort of nitrous. It doesn't look like nitrous to me, but it does have some sort of regulator on it. We have a fuel cell, which I guess I, it might be. Or this is an ice tank, one or the other. I guess we'll have to read his description. We have a battery box right there. I need a battery box for the Mustang ASAP. That's something I'm ordering up probably after this video. Underneath the hood, sick aluminum high-rise intake manifold. The headers look fucking crazy. Looks like somebody's twisted up cable management underneath their desk. I'm looking at you. We have, it looks like two charge pipes going into the intake, which I mean makes sense. I'm guessing there's a throttle body somewhere around here. It's hard to see, but I, I just see V-bands galore. I don't even know what angle this photo is. Oh, is that the turbo down there? I can't even see shit. This angle, this angle is disorienting. Okay, now there's a blurry one. He's just getting... Oh, my God. What are these photos? Wh whose grandpa is taking these photos? Get your thumb out of the photo, grandpa. The side skirt slash fender exit is pretty badass. I do like that. If I do do twins on the Mustang, I'll probably do something like that. One, we'll just reduce a lot of weight. But two, it's just fucking sick. We'll see, though. We'll see. I'm talking with some subscribers right now that have similar setups to me and they're hooking, so we might not have to ditch the Whipple after all. We'll have to see. We have some other reservoir here. Again, it looks like he's got like crazy cooling tanks or something just everywhere. If this is an air to water system, then that would make sense. I mean, it's right there. I know that's pretty common for uh, Vipers. They usually do an air to water setup. My boy works at a Viper shop and he tried to push me on the one, so... uh yeah, it's it's a pretty uh pretty solid setup. It looks like is that Haltech? Yeah, this is a full on race car. Th this isn't a street car anymore. This is a car that you buy if you have like four other cars already. Like this is like oh I want a twin turbo Viper. Here you go. Oh we got a video of it. It's in like fucking 240p. But it sounds like it was recorded with a potato too. You guys aren't missing out on the audio. It, it doesn't sound all that special. If only it was recorded on like a, you know, a cell phone from this century, then it would probably look pretty good. But anyways, let's read his description. 2001 Dodge Viper twin turbo Nelson competition built engine. Twi uh, turbos are twin 88 millimeter pro mod turbos. Holy fuck. Sheet metal intake, ATF, uh, power glide, uh, billet bolt together converter, Mark Williams IRS, 315 pro tire on single bead locks. Water to air intercooler, call it. Full interior, body not cut, fuel tech, engine management, 8.5 cage. Made 2,000 horsepower to the tire while tires were slipping at 28 PSI. Like, my God, man. Let me just tell you guys, you know, I think my cars are pretty quick. Like, like especially for what I tried to do with them, I want it to just be right around 1,000 horsepower. I'm going to go for more on the Mustang because... I want that car to hurt people's feelings, but I'm not trying to set records. I'm not trying to, you know, flex my penis on TikTok or, or YouTube or anything like that. I'm not in it for all that. I just like having fun on occasion, right? It's not that serious to me. I build my cars for myself and just to have some fun and just to get that sensation in your belly. 
With 2,000 horsepower, you will never be able to get on it on the freeway unless it's like 3 a.m. and you have a homie blocking off the freeway. There is not enough space on the freeway to get on it. I had to pop a quick shield really quick. Anyways, yeah, I mean, honestly, if you're building your car and you're like, damn, I'm only going to be able to make 700. 700 is plenty of fun to have on the on the freeway, on the street or whatever. I wouldn't recommend putting, you know, I don't recommend speeding on the street. But, you know, if, if the freeway's empty at night and you got plenty of room and you know how to control your car, have a little fun. Just don't go weaving in and out of cars and endangering other people. If it's an open freeway, have fun. That's it. Anyways, 2,000 horsepower, absolutely insane. Sick-ass car, don't get me wrong. Would love to have it. I just don't know when the fuck I'd be able to drive it. Next car, 1984 Ford NASCAR Thunderbird. Somebody owns a NASCAR, and they're only selling it for 20 grand. Why does that seem relatively cheap to me? Like, I know it's a race car. I know it is, right? But, oh my god, I want it so bad. Like, this thing, this thing is just so fucking cool looking. It's just one of the coolest looking things, like, I, I can imagine pulling up in Cars and Coffee with, you know? This thing is fucking sick. And the fact that it looks like it was actually a, a, a Thunderbird race car, that's sick as hell. That is so badass. Like, that is fucking hardcore. Imagine pulling up to Cars and Coffee. Every Corvette dad, every Corvette grandpa, every fucking, all these old geezers, dude, they'd be fucking bricked up looking at this thing. They'd be like, holy smokes, man, where'd you get this thing? Holy moly. Like, this thing is badass. I like it. I, I even like the color scheme, too. They even got, like, a, a this is before Nardo Gray was a trend. They got Nardo Gray, orange, blue, red. Look at this. That's a good-looking car. Yeah, the, the sad part is it's definitely not street legal. I doubt you could register. You might be able to. There might be a VIN somewhere on that thing. But I don't see it being that hard to honestly attach some lights and some relays and some shit and make it kind of street legal. I could see it being possible. But that's up to the owner. It's badass as is. Anyways, um, I thought I would just cover this really quickly. We don't really have to read a whole lot about it. But, yeah, it's a, you know. Oh, look at that. It even has drivers. Original chassis under the body was built by Petty Enterprises in the late 1983 for Kyle Petty. Kyle Petty, number seven. If I'm not mistaken, I could be way off. The person I bought one of my corgis from is related to Kyle Petty, which is just ironic. Small world. And she has, like, photos with him. I think it's Kyle Petty. It might be. It's, like, her uncle or something. I don't know. Cool. Regardless. Anyways, Dick Brooks, number one. And Bobby Allison in 1985. Pretty sick. Pretty sick. Like I said, I just thought I would show you this just because, I mean, I don't... I've never seen a NASCAR for sale. And that thing looks sick as fuck. I want it. Someone give me $20,000 to go buy this thing and I'll buy it. Anyways, next car, 1993 Honda Civic SI Hatchback. Two-door, 3500 bucks. 3500 bucks. And you get a little EG. I already see an intercooler. I already see charge piping. I mean, what could what could go wrong? I haven't seen this listing, so who knows? Let me take a guess, though. Based on this hood exit, I that that's definitely a B series. No, is it? Ooh, I don't know. I don't know what's underneath this hood. Why is the charge piping going in both ways? I haven't looked at this. We're going in blind. Hashtag Helen, Helen Keller. We're looking at this bad boy. Does he not show underneath the hood? I will legit go to this guy's house and beat his ass if he doesn't show underneath the hood. There we go. Oh, it is a B series. I guess that's where you'd want to dump it, sort of, I guess. Most people just dump it right in front. But making this piping that, you know, just rides right next to your radiator and your engine block, just that, that seems like a good idea, right? I would just not do that. But it is what it is. I knew it wasn't a K-Series because right there is where the engine sits on a K-Series. So uh, a boosted B-Series for 3500 bucks. What is wrong with this car? We got to read the description. I already see no filter, so that's a giant red flag. Um, the engine cover looks like it was painted by a six-year-old with some finger paint. There's some random shit in the engine bay that I don't know. Like, what the fuck is this thing right here? What, what, it looks like he's got an extra shift knob in the engine bay. I don't know what that is. It's got a vacuum line going to it or something. I don't know. Let's read his description really quick. Had an engine swap. It's a turbo B20 engine, LS transmission, uh, precision turbo, mission mode intercooler, 1,000cc injectors, Hondata. Uh, what's wrong with it? Picked it up as his buddy picked it up as a project, but found something else he wants to purchase, so the project has to go. Doesn't run. Small issues need to be fixed. Blah 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 blah. I mean, thirty five hundred bucks gets you a solid foundation. I'm, I will say this: for an EG, although it looks primered out, the body looks pretty straight. And finding a straight EG nowadays is pretty hard. Hell, finding a straight anything nowadays is pretty hard. Anyways, thirty five hundred bucks. Moving on. 
Next card, 2003 Lexus GS300. I Someone sent this to me, and I haven't looked through it. it, it the, they said it was a tuner car, so I, I guess we're going to find out. But um, it don't look like a tuner car from here. I was like, all right, I'm going to flame up whatever moron sent me this one. But let's take a look. Okay, we have a duct in the headlight. A homemade duct. I don't know if I would trust that, but, you know, homemade. Looks completely stock on the exterior. Got some cheap-looking wheels, nothing crazy. Exterior, just the rear end looks boring as hell. Interesting shifter. Very interesting. I guess we'll have to see what's underneath the hood. It's a boosted LS. I was wrong. How the hell do people come up with these weird swaps? I mean, I know LS swaps are, are, are pretty common, but a turbo LS in a GS300, is it twin or is it just single? It looks like it's a single 76 millimeter turbo with a 92 millimeter throttle body stage two cam 650 cc injectors seems kind of small in my opinion for a fucking 76 millimeter turbo they can't make that much right over 20,000 invested in parts a new built stage 3 4 l80 e trans with a 3200 billet torque converter motor turns over and runs no problem but still needs a tune that's sketchy hose fittings for radios what Hose fittings for radios over a oh, radiator, I'm guessing. Snapped off recently. Haven't had time to fix it. Radiator holds fluid, no problem. Recommend bringing a trailer if you got some distance to drive it home. It's a little scary. A little scary to know. I don't know what it would make. I mean, 650cc injectors, to, in my opinion, that seems really small. I can't imagine this thing makes all that much power. Um, it's it's going to be fun to drive, and it's going to make some cool noises, but... I can't imagine that it's it's going to be all that fast in this current situation or setup. Still very cool, though. It's uh, completely a sleeper car. Like, 100%, I was wrong. I'm a man. I will admit it. I was wrong. I don't know if I'd spend $10,000 on it, but uh, that's a different story. Next car, 1987 Chevrolet Corvette, $25,000. I never understood why people did this. They, like, skeletonized their Corvettes, in my opinion. Like, it just it looks all right. It doesn't look all that cool. It's like, okay, whatever. But I don't see really the, the, the benefit of it. Like, I feel like it's just like a, a bad looking Corvette now. If you can, even, like, if you were to do this and then make it like a Can Am and go off roading, okay, I would kind of get it. But I feel like this isn't any more aerodynamic. I can't imagine it's too much lighter. Like, I'm sure it is lighter. Don't get me wrong. But you also had to add all of this piping and all of the exoskeleton and shit like that. So I would, I would imagine it might even be heavier. I mean, Corvettes are completely fiberglass, so how much weight are you really saving? Either way, still like a, a, a cool, interesting car. I've never seen one in person like this. I know that they're out there and stuff like that. I don't know that, uh, you know, I think a couple YouTubers made them or something like that or make some. I don't know. I don't watch car YouTubers. No offense to any car YouTubers. I just, I'm around cars all the time. I don't need to ingest any more car content. Um, if you guys want to read all that, go for it. It's got a big fuel cell. It's got a fucking massive battery. I mean, that's a giant battery. It's like a McLaren battery right there. It's got a parachute, so I would imagine it's fast. It pops wheelies. It's got big-ass tires. I guess that's the one thing that would be really nice is you never got to worry about rubbing. Like, you, you never have any rubbing issues with, with a fucking setup like this. Oh, he's even got a little blinky. He's even got a couple diapers around uh, his engine and his trans. I, I mean, I guess, you know, if you're a hardcore racer, that makes sense. I will say now actually looking at it though, that is a massive fucking turbo. Like that that is like a five inch inlet and a five inch fucking exhaust. That is insane. That is massive. Like working on this car would be very easy because everything is stripped out. But at the same time, oh I don't like that. You gotta put some grommets on those. Unless those are just boost lines, but still I would still put grommets on them. That that'll just that'll rub through eventually. Got some Viking shocks, dual adjustable. That's what I need to get for the Mustang, straight up. I'm talking to some companies, we're trying to get some. We'll see. Um but yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, it's, it's a cool setup. Let's read it. If you see this, that means it's available. Please read. Should I reply? Hey, is this still available? <laughs> He'll be pissed. Corvette Kart race car, 5.3 force induction, 88. TH400 custom cam and converter, 8.8. Four link Viking double adjustable. Too much to list. Okay, how fast is it? That's all we fucking care about. How fast is it? Runs a 5.5 at 129. I'm guessing that's got to be... Okay, yeah, that's an eighth. Rarely goes to the quarter mile, but it did run a 8.7 at 150 on a smaller turbo. That's fucking fast. That seems pretty fucking fast. I mean, I guess it is popping wheelies, but it's got nothing to lift, really. You know, it's, it's a half a car. 
We'll come with a barrel of E85. How generous. If you want one like that, go build one. It'll cost you $175,000. And he only wants 25000 that just seems like a bad investment, in my opinion. I mean, not not to buy this car, but I mean, like, just building one, you know? Regardless, eh, let me know what you guys think about that. Last car, 2016 Ford Mustang, $45,000. And it looks like it's damn near popping a wheelie right here. Look at that suspension, full extension. Can we see anything? Is that, a, is that a little turbo piping right there? Oh, yeah, there's an exhaust coming out the bumper. Well, I can tell you right now, it's a turbo Mustang. Don't know if it's twins, but it's turboed. He's got the drag wing as well. I was thinking about getting one of those for the Mustang, but, you know, we got to make over a 1,000 horsepower to make that, you know, even make sense. I'm not going to touch it until then. Sick shots, though. Whoever's your photographer, man, he's, he's got some good shots. I want to get some videos of my car, like, completely squatting like that. Ooh, giant twins. Very nice. Very nice indeed. He's got something of a filter. I'll at least give him that. And it looks like he tracks it, so... Maybe at the track you don't need a filter. Definitely driving on the street, though, I'd recommend it. This car looks menacing. Oh, my God. Look at that. Look at that fucking squat. Look at that full-ass extension. That shit looks hard as hell. This car's insane looking. Like, I, I, I love this car. Full cage. Very smart. It looks like a pretty fast car. Also got some sort of automatic. Probably another TH400. Very uh, true and tested. Ah, uh, no filters here. Ah, uh, tis tis. Smack on the wrists. Also, get some turbo blankets. Like, there's a lot of plastic in the engine bay of the Mustang. <laughs> I would definitely get some turbo blankets. Regardless, though, I mean, still a very uh, fast Mustang. Definitely purpose-built. This guy didn't go out and buy a carbon hood and some carbon fenders and some carbon doors. This guy was like, nah, we're buying race car parts. We're going fast. We don't, we don't need all that shit. You know how you make up for extra weight? You add more power. We don't need all that bullshit. This car only has 4,000 original miles. That's insane. Um, it's He's only asking 45,000. It's got a freshly sleeved motor, manly I-beams, manly pistons, uh, Boss 302 crank, 12 millimeter studs, Gen 1 heads with pack springs. It's a built 1.8 power glide. Um, it makes, oh my bad, it's capable of 1,500 plus wheel horsepower. Car needs very little to be finished. It does run and drive, but needs good rear suspension. Um, yeah, that, that's like my car. That's very close to how my car is. Anyways, very cool. Very cool cars. If I had to pick one, I mean, obviously, I would pick the fucking Viper. I know I was talking a lot of smack saying you don't need 2,000 horsepower. And you don't. But I still want it. Anyways, let me know your guys' thoughts. Which car was your favorite? Send me more listings. Uh, the McLaren reveal video will be out tomorrow. Then we have another video, a fun video coming out after that. So uh, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can flock to the videos with everyone else. And until next video, peace.